And I think we're finally coming down to the end of this. Hello guys, welcome, or if you've already seen my channel before, welcome back. I am the Philadelphia Whovian, and for this video we're going to be doing a countdown, a ranking, yes another ranking, and I think this might be the last one of this set of videos, where I've been doing rankings of classic Doctor Who writers who've written five stories or more. And with this one, I thought I was done with these lists. I thought I was, and then someone brought it up. They said, oh wait, there's Brian Hales. Yes, friends, I forgot that Brian Hales, or better yet, I just did not know, that Brian Hales has actually written six classic Doctor Who stories. I just thought he wrote three. So I literally had to go back and fix another list I was doing where I was ranking all the Doctor Who one-off writers who had written one or three or four stories. So now that I know Brian Hales has written Six stories. We're now going to be going into a list of ranking Brian Hales of stories. Who is a man? He is a man who contributed very well, very very well, to a large aspect of Doctor Who that we absolutely love. A lot of us in the fan base do enjoy, and we owe that to Brian Hales. So without further ado, we're going to get into the list. Disclaimer right now, guys. I it's not my fault. There's only five stories I can rank because one of his stories he wrote was called The Smugglers. It's, I believe, the second to last story or one of the last stories of the first Doctor. And it is completely missing. I have no way of seeing it. No way whatsoever. So as a result, I cannot rank it. But I can rank the top five. So we're starting at number five. From the first Doctor's era, we have The Celestial toy maker. The Celestial Toy Maker is ranked pretty low in this one for one very blatant reason. Most of it's missing. The only episode I could see was in my collection of the Lost in Time episodes of classic Doctor Who of the Patrick Troughton and William Hartnell era. And the only episode they have was the last episode of this, I believe, four-parter. So I only could see one of the episodes of this like three or four part story or something. So I can't really rank it that high because I don't know the whole story. So I'm doing the best I can here with limited, with limited resources. What can you do? But with the Celestial Toy Maker, um, I've heard some, like, you know, mixed things about it. With a story like this, there would be mixed reviews. We have First Doctor Companion is Steve Taylor and Dodo. And the bit I did see. Overall, even though it would never be the best story for me or my favorite story, I did very much enjoy a lot of aspects of it. The idea of them playing a game to the death to get to the TARDIS or for the Doctor to get them out of there, very entertaining. But also, the Celestial Toy Maker himself. I greatly enjoyed the idea of the Celestial Toy Maker. Mind you, it could be because they cast the right actor to play the Celestial Toy Maker. It could be that, I'm not going to lie. He did a great job playing him, but it's like with that and the time meddler, with the Daleks also and the Cybermen. The first Doctor's era was all about trying to give us villains who could become reoccurring. The Celestial Toymaker, he can come back. He is a very powerful being, and he, if they were to bring the Celestial Toymaker back, he could easily come back. And I think maybe... He does need a comeback. With the right actor, the right writing, he can be a force to be reckoned with. He could be a very good nemesis to the Doctor. That's my personal feelings. Next we have up is number four, The Curse of Peladin. This is from the third Doctor's era. I believe it is his the third um, season of his Doctor. So the third season of the third Doctor. We have The Curse of Peladin. With the third Doctor and Joe Grant going to a place of Peladin, and Peladin is a planet that is choosing, where the king is choosing to be a part of the Galactic, you know, Alliance and the Federation, all that. Um, with the Galactic Alliance, he is, his planet is a little bit, or at least his priest, is a little uh, against this idea because they're kind of a slightly savage-like planet, and they're worried about their independence, or he's worried about their independence, and all of their mythology and lore being sucked up by being a part of the Galactic Alliance. Now, this is a often malign story, and I see why. It does not always have the best production value, so it feels cheap in some ways, but here's the thing. This is a slight guilty pleasure of mine. One, the Doctor and Joe Grant are wonderful in this. Wonderful! They are so just 
adorable to watch together and I love them so very much. And with them arriving on Paladin where they're arriving and the TARDIS just falls down the cliff, I find very enjoyable as well. And it even, at least the world building to the Curse of Paladin is very unique. I will say that too. I feel like, oh, there was a lot of devotion and dedication put into an effort, put into making this feel like a legitimate, different planet. And I enjoy that. And the idea of the king being half human, well, not, well he is hum all human, but his mother was from Earth, so he feels that connection to Joe when she first gets there. I enjoy that too, and I enjoy the idea of the third doctor doing the l lullaby, like the nursery lullaby to the monster of Peladin. I enjoy that. I just do. What can you do? But I admit, I, I, it's on this part of the list because I see why people have problems with it. I, I'm not going to deny it. I see why you're not crazy about this. The Peladin stories are stories that will probably very rarely ever be anyone's favorite stories. They're there. And that's where they stand. There you go. So next we have up is number three. We have another Peladin story. The Monster of Peladin. Yeah, it's it. Not going to be anybody's favorite. With the monster paladin, we have Sarah Jane Smith with the third doctor. While I do like her with the third doctor, I admit Joe Grant will probably always be my favorite. Um, I mean, all of his campaigns were great. Liz Shaw, Joe Grant, Sarah Jane Smith, Brigadier. They were all awesome. But there was just something about Joe Grant I always feel the most for. But Sarah Jane Smith does a good job here. But everything is umped up. The production value is better. The directing is better. Um, just the design of everything is better. Everything is also on a grander scale. They clearly, clearly had a better budget with this. And so everything just looks really a lot better than it did before. Even the re visit reoccurring a aliens, who from the first one, The Curse of Peladin, they look better. It's just all amped up and it looks a lot, a lot better. My only problem with this story is something I just don't like when it comes to morality, where there's a plan where the princess or the queen and Sarah Jane Smith and someone else are planning to escape, and they do almost with, but here's a problem. The queen, someone steps on her cape and she falls and then Sarah Jane Smith and the other person get away, but the queen gets left behind. It's like... Sarah Jane Smith, shouldn't you try to stay and help? I mean, I know why she didn't leave in some ways. I know why she escaped. But other ways, I'm like, well, it's a little cold. A little cold. But that's really subjective. Maybe she did not know that the queen was not following them. Or maybe she's like, it's more important for me to escape and help and solve this problem. The queen will not be killed. It's a little up in the air. But, you know, it's, can't, it's one of those things where translate as you will. But still. It's where it is because I'm like, a, even though it's gotten a lot better when it comes to production value of... Since the last time we had the Curse of Peladin, it still will never be my favorite story. And now we come down to number two. So we were at the third Doctor's Era before, now we're going to the second Doctor's Era. And this is what I mean when I say that Brian Hales, he brought a lot to, or served a lot to Doctor Who because he introduced this new monster. At my number two slot we have the Ice Warriors. Yes everyone, Brian Hales was the one who created, or at least wrote the first story for the Ice Warriors. For I know a script editor could have created the Ice Warriors until Brian to write it, or Brian could have created them, not sure. But either way, the Ice Warriors, Brian Hales wrote, wrote the very first story with the Ice Warriors, and overall, it is awesome. I love them. They are another thing that make the Second Doctor era so special to me, because his era had the best, in my eyes, of the Ice Warrior stories. And the Ice Warriors, it's partly missing and the animation is not as good as I feel like it could have been. But overall, I still very much enjoy it. Love the Doctor and love Jamie in it. Victoria, there's a lot of screaming in it, but I still overall do enjoy her. Then we get down to our number one. And if you guys have seen my channel before, especially one person here, you know it's coming. And you're, and if you love it, you're like, oh, that's cool. But if you're that one person there who I know who you are, and you're not favoring the story, you're probably like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, number one we have from the second Doctor's last season, The Seeds of Death. Me, the ultimate Ice Warrior story. I love the seeds of death. It is just perfect to me. I mean, it has that one imperfection to it where the doctor gets um, jettisoned, but then he still, he's there in the ship somehow for some reason. Like, he somehow got jettisoned out, or he got, you know, dematerialized, but he got materialized back in the ship. But outside of that, I've got really no problems with this. I also feel like the, I, this is a prime example of the black and white 
of that time really working wonders for stories like this when it came to the first and second Doctor era. They added a feeling of fear and fright to it. It just, the Ice Warriors really benefited by TV being black and white at the time. If you want a full longer review on the um, Seeds of Death, I have a whole video on it, but overall I just love it. I love the Doctor in it. I love Jamie and Zoe so much. I could just watch those three all day. What can you do? Yep, so, the Seeds of Death will probably always be my number one Brian Hales story. So guys, what is your favorite Brian Hales story? Either way, I think we can all appreciate him for giving us the Ice Warriors, a villain who is iconic in Doctor Who. Thank you so very much, Brian Hales. Your work is very much appreciated, and you were great for it. We owe you that a lot. So guys, thank you so very much for watching my channel again. And again, if you have any requests of videos for me to do when it comes to stuff that I usually do focus, please do not be afraid to let me know down below in the comment section. So thank you again, guys, so very much. Peace out.